I'm RMAC Commissioner Chris Graham. Our 15 member institutions continue to bring you free RMAC Network webcasts. Our goal is to deliver quality video to promote the performances and achievements of our student athletes. The promotion, production, and delivery of these events requires funding. While regular season webcasting remains free, beginning this year, our league shall charge a nominal fee for viewers of our championships and tournaments. Please follow the information below, including Huddle and RMAC Network contacts should you need any assistance in the postseason. Thank you for supporting the RMAC Network. Welcome back inside the Gallagher Event Center as we get ready for the men's game to tip off between UCCS and visiting Westminster. Once again, alongside Brian Gein and I'm Jason Carter. And Brian, we saw the Mountain Lion ladies pull off a victory. The men looking to do the same. Yeah, absolutely. There was actually a very similar situation earlier in the season where the Mountain Lions had a ranked matchup the next day. But first, they have to take care of business against a much weaker opponent. They face off against, against Westminster tonight with a big game against Colorado Mesa tomorrow. Yeah, you kind of hope it doesn't have the same feel as the ladies game that we just watched. The pace maybe wasn't there for either team. As, uh, like you mentioned, Mountain Lion women also looking ahead to their game against Mesa tomorrow, which is a big one for them as well. The Mountain Lions did win the first matchup between these two teams, but they're going to be short numbers, so we'll see how they're able to respond to that. Absolutely. I think it's going to be important tonight that they focus on getting the ball around, continuing to work it, and start hot. We saw it in the women's game where the Mountain Lions just weren't able to get that energy off the tip. The Mountain Lions men's team needs to start off in a good place and get some energy early. Starting lineup first for the visiting Griffins will be Rylan O'Brien, Cole Kataguchi, Drake Middleton, Trey Wood, and Pierce Sterling. That's uh, four of their top five scorers in their starting lineup. For the Mount Lions, who will have nine healthy bodies this evening, they will go with James Ellis, Jaden Washington, Xavier Martinez, Noah Baca, and Jesse Iweezy, the big man in the middle for UCCS. Mount Lions come into this game with a 10 and 11 overall record. They are six and nine in our MAC play. That is good for ninth place. So one spot outside of the conference tournament at the moment. Westminster six and 15 overall, two and 13 in conference. That has them in last place as the opening tip is won by the Mount Lions. Griffins come into this one just one and seven on the road. They have struggled to win games in general this season, but especially at opposing field houses. Now they did have one of their two conference victories last Saturday at home when they beat Western Colorado. So maybe a little bit of confidence for the visitors as the first shot from UCCS was off the front rim by Noah Baca. Mount Lions shooting the three ball early. They're not necessarily a great three point shooting team. One of the lower teams in the conference, but they can have their games where they go off, shoot a lot of threes like they did against Fort Lewis in that big ranked win earlier in the season. Another three ball, this one out of the hands of Ellis. He missed it, but Washington there to clean up and put it back. The sophomore forward averaging about seven points a game, able to get that one to fall after a battle down below. That three ball, no good, and Jaden with another rebound. A little hesitation there from Xavier. What a feed, unable to finish, however, is Iweezy. Xavier Martinez, just a freshman, but just so savvy with passing the ball, third best in the Armac in assists. Kick out, drive, finish. Here's Sterling with the two points.
Washington left wide open, knocked down the triple. Looks like Middleton and Sterling got mixed up there. Jaden Washington comes off the screen, knocks down the big triple. He's got all of the points here so far. Sterling again, unable to respond, but an offensive rebound for the Griffins. Nice cut and an even better finish in traffic by Middleton. I'm not quite sure how Cole Kataguchi was able to sneak that one past Jaden Washington, just for kind of right into the sweet spot. Nice feed from Washington to Iweezy. Takes some bumps. I can't finish, though. I, Jesse's had a couple of shots in close, just unable to get them fall. Lefty three from the corner is good. And an early timeout called by Jeff Culver as he is unhappy with what he's seen here in the first three minutes. Just a 30-second timeout, so stay right here as Westminster has themselves a 7-5 lead. Not quite sure if you could, the camera picked up, but as Pierce Sterling knocked down that three, I believe that's his second three-pointer of the game, maybe just his first, but I think he, someone said something on the bench of UCCS. Sterling turned to look as he knocked down a big-time triple. Excuse me, that was Rylan O'Brien with the triple. So 7-5 in favor of the Griffins. And just like the women's team, the Griffin men don't necessarily shoot the three ball very well. So we'll see if that trend continues for the visitors after the women <laughs> shot the ball very well from beyond the arc in the first game. Washington again looking for some contact, doesn't get it. Westminster trying to run and they can't finish the dunk. At six foot nine, you wouldn't think Trey Wood would have a hard time throwing it down, and he missed that one. And then there's going to be a foul underneath the basket. Looked like he kind of hit the front rim when he went up, kind of a little bit wobbly maybe, and it just kind of snuck out for the senior. Hannes Saar and Max Stoddard check in for UCCS. Again, Mountain Lions only have nine healthy players for tonight's game, so may see a lot of short spurts as Stoddard straight off the bench left that three short. Like that play there as Martinez cut backside instead of going over top of the screen. Drew it, the defender of Stoddard who is wide open for the three. That's a shot Mountain Lions are happy with. That shot is off the mark, and Jaden Washington with yet another board. Stoddard, oh, 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 the big Kiwi down the lane. Great patience from the junior as he kind of just waited for the defense to relax, found an opening, stuffs it home for two points. Finish in the middle there for Middleton. You don't see Mac attack the rim like that very often, so it's great to see that. And he's going to do it again. <laughs> oh, twinkle toes, baby. Max Sodherd into the lane, finishes with the scoop. Can do it all. He can jam it home, and he can finish with a little bit of jelly there, able to kind of flip it up with the right hand off the glass. Back-to-back -back big offensive plays for Max Stoddard as that long shot is knocked down by Wood, showing off his range with the good 15-footer. And lead is still at two points for the Griffins. Now Stoddard showing off his range. That one's off the mark, however.
Raywood pours it in from the field at about 53% clip, deep three here off the mark. And the Mountain Lions hoisting up a lot of long three-pointers here to start things off. And like you mentioned, not necessarily a strength of this team coming in shooting just 33% from beyond the arc. Doesn't seem to deter them. O'Brien from the corner, his shot hit off the shot clock. So out of bounds, ball back to the Mountain Lions. And that brings us to the first media timeout. 13.34 to go. Westminster are up by two. Inside the Gallagher Event Center, 13 34 to go. Westminster has a small two point lead as UCCS relying on the three ball here early in just one of six so far. And a tie up in the lane. Possession arrow will go back to the Griffins. Max Stoddard and Jaden Washington with all the points here early for the Mountain Lions. Able to shoot the three and get into the paint for both of them. A little collision there for the Mountain Lions. Left to a wide open three pointer. It was missed. Weak side rebound though. Picked up. That shot I think was blocked by Gebetto who had just checked in but sticking with it and finally getting it to fall was O'Brien. O'Brien pumped up after that bucket. Battling inside. Was well, the senior. Nice move from Xavier Martinez. They're going to say it was on the ground. Foul's going to go against number 24. That's Pierce Sterling as Sharif Jadon checks in for UCCS. Both of these teams, a little bit of energy, a little bit of grit going into this game. Nice screen there from Stoddard. Martinez finds Saar, Han S's three is no good. And a travel is going to get called down low. Stoddard with great patience against the senior Case Peterson. He picks up his, not a foul, excuse me, but some good defensive effort there from the big man. And we've got uh, an incident over by the UCCS bench as David Gebetto is getting looked at by the training staff. He, I think, took a shot to the face. So now he's got uh, some paper or something on his lower lip to try and stop the bleeding. See him there in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen just leaving the picture. It's always impressed how Referees could see that from pretty much any angle. It's 
Saar, kick out, Ellis, three ball, short. Mountain Lions obviously saw something in their scouting report that they liked. Thought they would get a lot of open threes, and so far they have, just haven't been able to hit them. Yeah, just one of eight from now. Great tip there from Gebetto. Jadon racing down court, can't finish, Gebetto can't follow. Leads to a transition three ball, no good. Offensive rebound, put back. Mount Lions just kind of getting outworked at the moment by the Griffins. Doubled up on rebounds right now as the Griffins are up 12 to six. A couple of offensive rebounds that have led to buckets as well. Sars floater is no good and Hannes will head to the free throw line, but not until the media timeout is over. 11 minutes even to go in the first half. Westminster up by six. of 15 from the field. That is what the Mount Lions have started this game, just 26.7% as they find themselves down a six point rabbit hole and Hannes Saar going to try and get them closer. He does with his first free throw. Mount Lions with about four minutes of scoreless basketball, at least from the field. Last bucket came in the form of Max Stoddard's dunk. Excuse me, that fancy layup he had. But since that point, just these couple free throws mark any scoring for the Mountain Lions. So two of two goes Hannes Saar from the charity stripe and the deficit for the Mountain Lions is at four. Skip pass, good job by Hannes to jump the passing lane. Quickly get it up to Sharif. Jadon is off the mark as well. Mountain Lions dropped into a zone there. They'll go right back to it here as Jeff Culver wants to try a different look against this Westminster team. Into the lane, Iweezy, good job to uh, attack that drive and alter the shot just enough for the miss. Now Saar again to the rim. And they're going to give him the bucket. They're going to say goaltending. So Hannes Saar will get two points and a free throw. We can take another look at that. The officials talking about it. And Certainly looked from this vantage point like they might have hit the maybe the net or the backboard. And you're not allowed to touch anything when the ball is up there. So the officials, though, look like they're going to take a look at the replay and see if anything was actually touched as Westminster head coach Norm Parrish got an explanation from the officials. That would be a big-time bucket from Hannah Saar, who has kind of come into his own a little bit here in this half, driving to the rim, getting a couple of buckets. Right now it'll be 
marked as a field goal, but I'll take a look here. Replay, Han S. Yeah, so 23 came up and touched the net. And again, when the ball's up on the backboard or anything like that, you're not allowed to touch anything. So it was just a pinky finger. I don't know that it was enough to alter the shot or anything, but doesn't matter. We'll see if the officials make that call. I think it's fairly common on defense to, you know, you'll see players kind of slap the backboard or kind of, you know, go for these block shots that sometimes they get the backboard or they get part of the rim and certainly not legal. As long as you get the, if you get the ball first, you're good. Yeah, it's when you get the part of the basket first that you start to have issues is take a look down the two benches and The third official has walked into the replay section, so he's taking a look as well. So we take uh, another, just kidding. There we go. Let's take another look at it. There's Hannes at the end of the play as the officials started to talk about it. Here we go. Star. Yeah, just a little, little kind of tap there with the right hand. I think that was uh, Trey Wood. Oh, they took the points off the board. Okay, so the officials saw something different that we didn't see apparently, and so Hannes now will have two free throws instead of just one. First one's off the mark. Reminds me of football when they say there's not quite enough evidence to overturn. There must have been a different angle that we couldn't quite see. That one is good. So Hannes goes one of two from the line. Three ball, good. Tyler Kurtz with the triple. Harif Jadon and Hannes are getting a little mixed up there. Hannes thought he was switching and Jadon did not. And then Sar called for a travel up top. Xavier Martinez back in the lineup for UCCS as Pierce Sterling comes in for the Griffins. Mount Lions went to man to man, excuse me, person to person there for a second, then switched back to this little 2 3 zone. That three ball is no good, and Iweezy runs it down in the corner. Good job by Jesse to tiptoe the sideline and get it up to Xavier. Ellis floater, no good. Just not a good shooting night for the Mountain Lions. They are one of their last eight, and a finish on the other end for the Griffins. Griffins doing a good job of making their shots in the paint. They've taken eight threes, knocked down two of them, but the rest of those points have come in the paint. I Weezy with authority. Jesse got around the defender and threw it down. Jesse Iweezy on the leaderboard on points in the Armac, up to 22nd. And then a nice move there from the lefty Kurtz. They're gonna call Hannes Saar with a foul. Saar had picked up his dribble and was in the same rotation, you know, in the same spot. He didn't actually move, couldn't have, otherwise it would have been a travel. 
but they're going to call him for an offensive foul as Xavier Martinez rubbed his defender off of him. It's a heavy little move from the junior, Kataguchi. Kind of flipped the head back a little bit, and referee saw enough for a, I guess, a moving screen, and it'll go the other way on the same guy. <laughs> so Kataguchi got his call one way on one half of the court and then went the other way on the other half. Xavier, a step back three. Oh, oh boy. First points of the game are good ones from Xavier Martinez. Quick release from the freshman over the top of Tommy Ball. Didn't even look like his feet were set. That shot no good. Poked out, Nyweezy brings it out for the Mountain Lions. Here's Xavier again, split two Griffins, dropped it off, and a jump ball is going to be called. Possession arrow with UCCS. That brings us to the under eight, 7.24 to go. UCCS staying close, currently down by five. Twenty-four to go in half number one. Mount Lions will have it underneath the basket as Max Stoddard will run the inbound play. Looking for some help. Got it in to Jaden out near midcourt. Baca step back three of his own, and Noah Baca hits a triple, and all of a sudden the Mountain Lions can't miss from beyond the arc. Back to back three balls there, both of them with the defender right in the grill. Martinez hit that first one with ball all over him. Baca gets that one to fall. O'Brien trying to respond and does with a triple of his own. The officials say they're going to take a look at that one at the next dead ball as Culver thought his foot was on the line. So the next dead ball, we will have an instant replay look as Washington and Mount Lyons all of a sudden scorching hot with three threes. Last four buckets have all been from beyond the arc with potentially the exception of O'Brien's shot, but suddenly the three-point ball the most important shot in this game. Seven on the shot clock. O'Brien puts up another triple. That one's off the front rim, and Baca runs it down. Noah quickly over to Xavier. Another triple, and the Mount Lions all of a sudden are crushing it, and we're going to have a flop call on the outside on Xavier Martinez. And the officials are going to instantly give him a technical. As they said, Xavier flopped, faking the contact. So if I'm not mistaken, he gets the three points, but then picks up the technical foul on the flop call. I really don't think that 
I mean, I know he fell back, but it really felt like the senior guard, Rylan O'Brien, was at least in the landing area of Martinez. And now O'Brien on the other end will get a free throw as you take a look at Xavier. And O'Brien ties it up with the free throws. We take a look. This is the last play. Martinez put it, I mean, there was contact. I'm not sure what the official was looking at, but Xavier definitely made contact with O'Brien. I feel like they need to look at that one again, too, because not sure about that call. And then a turnover. So the Mountain Lions quickly get it up. Baca tried to drop it off to Iweezy, but it's poked away. Two on one for the Griffins. O'Brien drops it off. And the finish there, the easy layup for Wood. Mount Lions not quite getting back quick enough in transition. Jaden Washington's three is off the mark. Good job by Weezy on the help side defense as he comes up with the steal. Xavier got around his defender. What a step back. Oh, wow. Xavier Martinez with a great shot. Playing a little bit pissed off here. Knocked down a big three, got called for that. Maybe bump on the hip that we weren't sure about, but either way, frustrated, knocks down a tough shot. Three ball, no good. Long rebound to Noah Baca. No numbers, so Noah will wait for the rest of his mountain lion teammates to show up. This has been the matchup all night. Mac, quick release on the three. The big Kiwi has done it all. A three ball, a dunk, and then a twinkle toes layup, accounting for his seven points. Mountain Lions started off, I want to say it was one for eight, maybe one for nine from three point. They're up to 40% now off the hands of several Mountain Lions. Jaden Washington has a pair, Xavier with two, and Noah Baca hit that one as well. And another three ball, this one by the Griffins out of the hands of Middleton. Tied at 31, so neither team could hit the broad side of a barn from beyond the arc early on, but as of late, UCCS is three of their last four, excuse me, five of their last six from beyond the arc, as that play will bring us to the under for media timeout, final media timeout of the first half. We head into it tied at 31.
viewing. Officials still taking a look and reviewing the earlier play by O'Brien. It was a long shot that UCCS head coach Jeff Culver thought O'Brien's foot was on the line, but it appears the officials have decided that it was indeed a three-pointer as the score remains 31 all. So we'll get back to action. UCCS with the ball underneath the basket. That one felt like a lifetime ago. I almost forgot about it. Xavier didn't have enough power to get it up on the rim. Mount Lions in a 2-3 zone. Martinez and Baca at the top. O'Brien got loose at the free throw line, missed the shot, run down, saved, however, to the Griffins. Shot clock reset to 20 instead of 30 since the Mount Lions technically took possession when Saar tried to save it inbounds. It's a fresh 30 for Westminster. And that's the explanation that uh, Jeff Culver's getting right there from the officials. So Griffins will take it out. 24 now on the shot clock. Little 2-3 zone has given the mountain line some interesting defensive look. A lot more steals as you see right there. Good job by Noah Baca to come from behind and poke it away as Max Stoddard gets into the lane, creates some space, and they're going to call it on the ground. Foul is going to go against Case Peterson, the sixth team foul for Westminster. As Ellis and Iweezy check back in for UCCS. First 10 minutes of this first half felt like, as you mentioned, neither team really able to convert very well. Now both teams over 40% from the field, the Mountain Lions. Six of 15 from three-point land. Star, skip pass, Ellis. Good rotation there. Oh, what a pass out to Saar. Oh, that Saar brought the feed from Xavier Martinez. Xavier Martinez, four assists per game. One of the best playmakers in the RMAC. Doing it there, no look in that one. Over to Hannes Saar. O'Brien in the lane again, and the lefty drops in two more. He's the first player in double figures. Loves that fadeaway, does the senior guard. He's had a number of those going right to left off of one foot. Martinez trapped, gets it over to Ellis. Saar found, finally found Baca, who had his hands up looking for it. They rotated around to Xavier. Martinez also in double figures after that three-pointer. Xavier Martinez, three of three from way out as he's able to get that one to fall. And a timeout called by Westminster. It'll be a full timeout. So, nope, sorry, it is a 30-second timeout. I saw the players sit, and they're not allowed to sit during a 30-second. So 112 to go. We'll stay right here as UCCS finally found their shooting touch, Brian. Yeah, we're up to 45% now from the field. They've been able to get into the lane really off the hands of Xavier Martinez these last couple of minutes, who's been able to shoot from way out, makes a couple of passes, and knock down a couple of important shots for his team. You see Xavier there in the UCCS huddle talking with Head coach Jeff Culver as Mount Lions will break the huddle with a four point advantage. Xavier, of course, the catalyst, a game high 11 points and three assists. And he had a couple of other assists that should have counted had the, his teammates been able to finish off some really nice passes. But We'll see if this trend continues. 65 seconds to go here. They're going to get a foul down low. It's going to go against Iweezy. Just the first on him, only the second team foul. So the Mountain Lions done a really good job of playing some clean basketball. 
Don't want to incur the wrath of the announcer's jinx, but the Mountain Lions have been exceptional in taking care of the basketball today. Only four turnovers. Nice defense by Han S. Saar there. As he was able to force a tough shot that was missed. Mountain Lions with a chance to increase their lead. Baca pull up three off the mark. A little bit of a heat check there from Noah Baca. Put the ball up quick, didn't even hold the form. As he did on that first shot. Tried to get a two for one, and with the quick three-pointer, they do. So Mountain Lions, if they're able to come up with a stop, should have the final possession here in the first half. Five on the shot clock for Westminster. Shot up, no good. Rebound Iweezy, and the Mountain Lions will indeed have the final possession. Great work defensively. Xavier Martinez able to make the much taller I, I want to say it was Wood kind of turn and fade away. Xavier kick over. Saar into the lane. Extra passes. Xavier for three. Oh, ho, ho. Mountain Lions got the look they wanted. Martinez unable to convert, though. But after a very slow start, UCCS found their touch from beyond the arc and will head into halftime. Mountain Lions leading by four. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have an interview with UCCS women's head coach, Misty Wilson, as we leave you with a couple of highlights from the first half. Don't go too far. I've always been motivated to make a positive change. Whether it was becoming the first in my family to attend college or taking care of the next generation as a nurse. When I chose UCCS, I didn't just pick a school. I chose a like-minded community hungry to make a difference with me. Now living my dream, working at Children's Hospital, I can say that with UCCS, it wasn't a matter of if I'd succeed, it was a matter of when. inside the Gallagher Event Center. Halftime here at the men's game. UCCS found their shooting touch from beyond the arc and they have the lead as we are here at halftime. I'm now joined by UCCS women's head coach Misty Wilson. And Misty, the important thing is your team got the victory. I know maybe not uh, the most exciting game from a coach's perspective for you. No, <laughs> it, it wasn't pretty uh, by any means, but um, as long as we can eat these out and, and come away with the win, that's the most important thing. And, you know, in these games, especially with the back-to-back -back and Mesa coming up, you know, they call them trap games for a reason. And, you know, we try to kind of rest some of our players that, you know, they're going to have to play heavy minutes tomorrow. So um, our rotation looks a little different in these games, but um, luckily came away with the win. Overall, though, uh, is there something you can take away from this game that hopefully will help your team tomorrow? Because like you said, 
Mesa comes in half a game ahead. You guys have a chance to move into third place. I mean, talk about a big game. Yeah, it's it's a huge game, and we've we've talked about it. You know, we show our team, you know, the R updated RMAC standings, and um, even receiving a few votes in the regional uh, polls right now. And so, you know, any win we can get, especially against teams that are getting, you know, but, uh, are in that regional ranking and, and have winning records, are going to be really helpful for us. Um, so we, we understand how big of a game it is. And, um, you know, I, I felt like we didn't play our best the last time we played them. I, we missed a lot of really easy opportunities at their place and are looking forward to kind of a bounce back, get, bounce back game against them. Yeah, it was close the last time you guys played. And anytime you can go to Grand Junction and come away, even with a close loss, that's got to be at least a little bit of confidence building as they come into your building. It is. Uh, I think we lost by five that first time and um, hit some really big shots down the stretch. But we, we started off the game. I think both of us, neither team scored for like the first two and a half minutes of that game. And um, the difference, though, is in that first two and a half minutes, we were getting layups and, and missing them. But we were getting steals on the other side. So um, our defense has got to come ready. We've got to be a lot more physical tomorrow than we were tonight and uh, hopefully can defend home court here. This team has seemed to kind of maybe hit a groove a little bit, especially here at home. You've played so well here on campus. What has it been about the home court? Because that's not always the case for every single team. Yeah, well, I think, you know, our, our fans, um, you know, really help, especially once we start getting, you know, bodies in the building. You know, when we first start at five, it's early. and But as fans start trickling in, you know, that gets our players excited. And, um you know, I, honestly, I think they're just really comfortable in this gym. You know, I, I feel like, you know, we learned a lot, you know, in this gym, you know, coming in and, and kind of trying to turn this program around. So they, they feel really comfortable here and uh, it, it's it's home. And, you know, we talked about the importance of defending our home floor and uh, they, they really take that to heart. Well, we're going to employ everybody out there. Please come in tomorrow. Yes, Women tip off at five o'clock. They welcome in Colorado Mesa who is half a game in front of them for third place in the RMAC standings. UCCS women's head coach Misty Wilson, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Misty, men's halftime. We've got about uh, 10 minutes to go, and we'll come back then with the start of the second half. See you then. From dog tags to diapers, the Big Apple to the Rocky Mountains, it's been a journey working towards an unclear destination until I arrived at UCCS. With a community that matched my level of commitment, I was able to build relationships that supported the pursuit of my possibilities. Fast forward and one degree later, I can say that thanks to UCCS, it wasn't a matter of if I'd succeed, it was a matter of when. The legacy began in 1973. That was the year NCAA Division II was born. And since the very first day, our division has shaped generations of student athletes with a true sense of academics, athletics, and community. That is five decades of graduations, championships, teamwork, and personal development. 50 years of shaping student athletes into world-class leaders. NCAA Division II, our division, our legacy. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity, one to be seized, built upon, and made better for their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do. The majestic mountain lion, one of nature's most powerful predators, Primarily indigenous to the Americas, this big cat is known to make its home just about anywhere. Although most consider them to be solitary in nature, these big cats actually show advanced social intelligence. This cat is known to be territorial and as such will fiercely defend its territory from other big cats, employing a blend of power and stealth, except during courtship. UCCS, find your inner mountain lion. Picking the right college is key. And with one-on-one -on -one attention and hands-on experience, 
UCCS fuels success. I wanted more than a degree. So with innovative courses and affordable tuition, UCCS fuels success. Apply today at uccs.edu. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. The majestic mountain lion, the perfect combination of size and deadly agility. This big cat is capable of speeds of 40 to 50 miles per hour, when properly motivated. UCCS, find your inner mountain lion. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? Necessity is the mother of invention, but innovation as a whole, that's what drives disruption. And that's what drove UCCS and me to create the Bachelor of Innovation, the only degree of its kind in the world that takes students from the classroom to real scenarios that have real impact. With the Bachelor of Innovation serving students across 22 majors, I can say that with the support of UCCS, it wasn't a matter of if we'd succeed, it was a matter of when.
about ready to start the second half here inside the Galilee Event Center. UCCS with a four-point lead, and Brian, Mountain Lions finally found their shooting touch there over the last, say, 10 minutes or so. It felt like it was two totally different, I want to say, halves, but just that one half, 10 minutes of the first, it was, I think the Mountain Lions were one or eight, one of eight or one of nine from three-point land. They're now up to eight of 19, 42% shooting much, much better from the field in general, whereas it has kind of slowed down for Westminster as you take a look at some of the stats here. Yeah, the Griffins just 4 of 12 from beyond the arc. They did shoot 44% almost from the field overall. So the Mountain Lions are going to have to slow that down at least a little bit over the final 20 minutes if they want to hold on to this four-point lead. Same starters across the board for both teams as that one's knocked down by Kataguchi. Mountain Lions going to person to person there to start off their defensive efforts. We'll see what 12 year head coach Jeff Culver likes here in the second half. I wheezy three from the corner, short. Griffins with numbers, Kataguchi right down the lane. I, I wheezy looked like he might've gotten a piece of the ball, but also got some body. So Cole Kataguchi will head to the free throw line. I wheezy doing a good job there, baiting Kataguchi into taking the layup instead of dishing it off to the much taller Trey Wood, who is in tow. Fortunately, gets a little bit of the body on the block attempt. That free throw ties it up. So what was a four point lead has evaporated here very quickly in the first 55 seconds of the second half. Washington, outside to Martinez. Xavier, step back three. Nope. Xavier trying to operate on a bit of a phone booth there. Finish, no good. The follow, they're gonna get an offensive foul, however, on Middleton as he came over the back. Junior did a good job battling against Iwizi, but unfortunately for him, it, it's a little bit of a forearm shove to the back. Of Jesse Iweezy, it'll go the other way. Washington from the corner, his three also no good. Iweezy, good rebound though. Finds a cutting James Ellis who can't finish, but James will have some free throws. James Ellis shoots better from beyond the arc than he does from the field. Almost jammed that one right over the top of the defender off of two feet, not a move you see too often from number zero. And a good free throw shooter is Ellis, 76% on the season, knocks down the first. And two and two goes the freshman from Australia. Good job by the Mountain Lions to stay put on defense and Xavier Gets out pushing, what a feed! Holy cow, Xavier Martinez threatened the needle to James Ellis. Up to his season average in assists and on an absolute beauty through traffic, looking away. Just has such a knack for passing the ball. Air ball there, Washington with the rebound. Mountain Lions maybe with a little bit of momentum. And Jeff Culver wanted a flop, how about that? Yeah, another bounce pass feed, and Jesse Iweezy throws it down, and that forces Westminster to call a timeout. 
turns into a full timeout. First coaches of the second half, 17, 26 to go. Mountain Lions have put a little bit of distance between them and the Griffins up by six. those feeds there from Xavier Martinez. Just a ridiculous patience to find Iweezy who slips the screen, is able, just, excuse me, Xavier Martinez who is up to five assists already in this game. Just the patience, the vision, just so crafty in his playmaking abilities as the freshman. jumps over the offensive player, comes away with the steal. Mount Lions once again doing a good job taking care of the ball, not taking any unnecessary risks here. Get the ball into your best player's hand. Iweezy all the way to the rim. Jesse Iweezy. What a ridiculous effort from the big man, able to weave in and out. Uh, I think everyone thought he was gonna try and get that ball to Xavier Martinez with the hot hand. Takes it himself and gets the mighty tough bucket there. And the free throw is good, so the Mount Lions have their largest lead of the game right now, up by nine. Sticking in the person to person, making sure to give them these kind of odd jumpers. That's exactly what O'Brien had there and he missed it. Baca into the lane, drops it off to Jesse and they're gonna get a foul on the floor. Iweezy has been the benefactor. I know he didn't get the points officially there, but he has been the benefactor of some nice passing from both Noah Baca and Xavier Martinez. Jesse Iweezy's ability to finish around the rim makes them probably the guard's favorite person to pass to as around the rim, he shoots around 60%. Oh, that be just a little bit too high. Good job by Baca. They're gonna call Iweezy there for probably a little bit extra curriculars as it was a loose ball and he tried to uh, stop the Griffin player from running it down. That's the third on Jesse, so he's gonna to have to sit for a little bit as Max Stoddard checks back in. Mount Lions defensive effort is something to be proud of here in the start of this second half. They've been doing great rotating, getting around, making shots tough, as probably could have gotten a foul call there as well in favor of the Mount Lions. Saw so a lot of, I don't want to say easy buckets, but on the easier side in that first half for the visiting Griffins, but Mount Lions have come out looking a little different here. Jaden Washington with a good feed, and then Xavier probably tried to do a little bit too much. 
And that brings us to the media, 15, 29 to go. Mountain Lions still holding on to their largest lead. It is nine points. Second half has started off very nicely for the Mountain Lion defense in particular as they've been able to hold Westminster to just one of six shooting here through the first uh, four and a half minutes of this second half. A very clean game in terms of the fouls as well. The Mountain Lions have done a good job staying vertical when they're contesting shots, keeping the hand checking to a minimum as, of course, they'll get one now, but not a whole lot of free throws for either side here in this one. Xavier is going to pick up his first personal of the game as O'Brien went to go make a move to try and get around him. Three ball from the corner. High arcing is nothing but net. Freshman guard Parker Christensen kind of left to his own devices there. Washington had a chance to contest, but must have been something in the report that said otherwise. Mack and Xavier go back to back, and then Mack, what a tough move there from Stoddard. Overpowers Kurtz down on the low block. Stoddard's got nine points, and all of them have been... Uh, <laughs> Very nice, says that was a good power move. Had a good finesse move earlier, a dunk, and then a travel there on Westminster. He also contributed a long three-pointer to wrap up his nine points. First time these two teams played, Mac attempted 10 three-pointers in that game, just three other shots from the field. And we're kind of accustomed to seeing number 24 from distance. But tonight he's taking it to the rim. Yeah, these two last played two months ago. That was back on December 9th, exactly two months ago, as Max now going to get a couple of free throws. And that was an eight point win for UCCS in Salt Lake City. The Mountain Lions have actually won six of the last seven against the Griffins. Westminster, a relatively new member to the Division II ranks. They were NAIA for a very long time before joining the RMAC just a handful of seasons ago. Mack goes two of two, and he's in double figures with 11. He, Martinez, and O'Brien all tied with a game-high 11 points. There's O'Brien. Lefty gets another shot up. And poof, I mean, that's tough because Hannes Saar was draped all over him. And if you can tell, Hannes was trying to, I think, even overplay a little bit and force O'Brien to drive into the paint. O'Brien does not oblige and knocks down another tough fader. Nice feed down low and coming over just too closely was Christensen. So he'll pick up the fouls. He tried to come over and provide some help side defense.
It's usually that we see Jesse Iweezy in that role of playing that bully ball down low. Max Stoddard has kind of taken over tonight. Gebetto looking for a feed and couldn't find Baca as Noah slipped there on the court and lost it out of bounds. O'Brien steps right over the back of Noah Baca, drawing a little bit of, say, displeasure from members of the crowd. O'Brien missed that one, but an offensive rebound and put back right down low from Kenyon Clark. Stoddard into the lane again, a little bit of contact, can't finish, Gibetto's follow, no good. Baca, another rebound, kick out, Martinez, nope. And Stoddard's gonna pick up a foul, battling for the rebound down low. For him, just his first. Provides a little bit of a different look for sure when Mac is taking it to the defenders like that. Wow, nice take there and lefty shot from Christensen as he worked around four mountain lions. Xavier, a floater of his own, high off glass, unlucky, and a foul down low on O'Brien. It'll stay with UCCS. Good job by Xavier as he gave O'Brien a hard time down there, and then O'Brien picked up the personal, so it'll be mountain lion ball after the media timeout. 11.56 to go, UCCS holding on to a slim four-point lead. UCCS has been scoreless for the last two minutes, and that has allowed Westminster to go on a 6-0 run and cut what was the largest lead of the game down to just four. Xavier knocks down the front end of a one and one. So Martinez, good from both free throws. That was where his first two free throws of the game. That shot, no good. A nice follow, however, and one. Foul's gonna go against Hannes Saar. And the free throw is going to go to Clark. So Clark picked up the tip bin. And now he'll have a free throw. Junior forward out of 
Idaho Falls. Two important buckets here to kind of cut down on this mountain lion lead. Both tippins for number 41. So the free throw makes it a one possession game, close as it's been in a while. Xavier, nice feed, Iweezy now will get some free throws. And Xavier Martinez lit it up in the later part of that first half. He's up to 13 points, three of six from outside of the arc. Has now turned his attention to assisting his teammates as he's up to five in this one. As you mentioned though, probably could have a number of more assists, but Jesse Iweezy gets fouled a whole lot, taking it to the rim. Mount Lions, just one of their last seven from beyond the arc. So they had that hot spurt towards the end of the first half and haven't shot the three well since as a nice feed there from O'Brien down low to Wood. standing wide open in the corner makes Westminster pay. Ellis gets his first three of the night to fall. It's taken a few already, but knocks down an important one there. Extend the lead a little. We'll get another one right back. That one's way off the mark, and Iweezy corrals it. Xavier into the lane, kick out Ellis from the other corner this time. No good. Ellis usually a spot up shooter, shooting just shy of 50% from three ball range. Wow, what a good take and finish there from Wood. Getting around Iweezy is not an easy thing, and Wood was able to do it, and then kind of use the rim as an extra blocker, and that air ball leads to a fast break. And there's going to be a foul on the floor. Well, I want to say a smart foul there as Ellis stopped the basically run out from Kenyon Clark, able to avoid any shooting foul. I thought maybe he forced to travel initially. Wood off the inbound, no good. Loose ball rebound, run down by UCCS. Now Baca one on two, can't finish. Iweezy picks up a foul there as Cole Gataguchi able to maybe sell it just a tad, but just see Iweezy going to go back to the bench with four personals. And that's too bad because Iweezy, when he's on the floor, is such a difference maker, and he just hasn't been able to stay out of foul trouble so far today and he's still got nine points and nine rebounds as that free throw is off the mark and maybe ball don't lie a little bit on that shot. Xavier caught that pass, split the Griffins and he's gonna get called for an offensive foul. Felt like Xavier Martinez, not sure if we can see it again, but was driving to the rim and was getting kind of hacked on his way. Just kind of used that off arm. As we'll see the mountain lion zone here. Oh. 
That shot's no good. Ellis almost lost it out of bounds, but gets it into the hand of Xavier. Martinez. Stoddard. That's big. Max Stoddard with a big three. Xavier Martinez ties his season and career high. Attacking on seven assists here in this contest. Good defense from Mack. Rebound. Jump ball. Possession arrow to the Mountain Lions. Important job there from Noah Baca, who hasn't made his name won't show up too much on the stat sheet, but diving in there to get that ball in a big crunch time moment. And UCCS calls a timeout, and it'll be a full timeout, so we will take a break as well. Mountain Lions up by seven. points here with eight and a half remaining here in the second half and it's kind of been a tale of two halves the first half felt like they couldn't make a whole lot of shots in this second half they've really really turned it around off the hands of Xavier Martinez Max Stoddard and a handful of others so UCCS will have possession coming out of that timeout thanks to a jump ball and up by seven Hannes Saar, an extra pass. Baca uh, tried to drop it off to Stoddard and it was picked off. Westminster almost throws it away. Saar got a piece of that and he'll go out of bounds and stay with the Griffin. Hannes is saying he didn't touch the ball at all. He just had a hand up in contest. Sure looked like he got a piece of it, at least from here. Nonetheless, it'll be Griffin Ball. Nice play from the Griffins. They found Wood underneath after he rubbed off a couple of screens. Xavier Martinez straight to the basket. Not sure how Westminster forgot about him. Speed kills off that screen. A crafty freshman guard able to sneak past everybody. Gets off his feet early as Wood knocks down the jumper. So Martinez on his right on his season average of 15 points per game. And we've still got about seven minutes to go in this contest. Tough touch there from Sterling, a seal able to get down the court and finish. Crafty move from the senior, able to guess the right way on Hannes Saar. Stoddard got his defender in the air again, and one. Max Stoddard took the contact, and I'll have a free throw. I have no idea how he got that out of his hands. He was wrapped up hand on the wrist and somehow got the ball up and over the rim. What a move from Max Stoddard. 
Stoddard has been a man possessed here as we've seen him drive and finish, I feel like, more times in this game than we have most of the season. Free throw is good from the big man as we take another look. <laughs> I mean, he just kind of rolled it up his fingertips and it went up and over. I mean, that's just ridiculous. The effort it takes, concentration to hold on to the rock and get it out of your hands when you know you've got the foul. I thought he was going to try and dunk it there. Going to have a foul on the ground. It'll result in free throws, though. The foul is on Martinez. That's his third. Fouls are starting to pile up a little bit for him. And the ninth team foul. Both teams at nine team fouls. So we'll be shooting, I would imagine, quite a few free throws the rest of the way. Clark once again making an impact, getting another important rebound. The Mountain Lions, just like in the women's game, kind of sitting on this four to six point bubble. That shot's no good. Good job by Washington to run down the rebound. Yeah, five points at the moment. Mountain Lions did have it at 10 for a little bit, but Westminster's clawed and kept it close. There's gonna be a foul down low. And Mack will get a couple of free throws as Clark picks up his first personal. Only eight fouls combined for both teams in the first half. Second half, we're already up to 18. Mack left the first one short. Second one is good, and we're back up to six points. Three ball from the corner, no good. Rebound, good job by Xavier to watch his tippy toes along the baseline. Martinez quickly up, drops it off to Ellis. Down low to Jaden Washington. Oh, nice move from Jaden Washington, who'd been quiet since his hot start but he's now in double figures. Drops the shoulder and then drop steps perfectly to the other side against just as big of a defender. And Hannes Saar stepped in front of the charging Griffin and takes the offensive foul and we're heading the other way. Xavier and Sterling have played the most minutes in any of these players. Xavier looked like he got hit a couple of times going down the lane and then couldn't quite get the shot up high enough off the rim. And unfortunate possession there for UCCS. Six on the shot clock, O'Brien. He's very, very comfortable with that shot over the defender. Mid-range jumper, a lost start in a lot of places as it is not for him as I feel like almost all of his shots have been from about 12 feet out. Stoddard left it short. Too hard by O'Brien that time. Rebound gets punched out to Saar, and they're gonna get a foul on Westminster on the rebound. It'll go against Wood. That's his second. And the Mountain Lions will walk down to the other side and have some free throws. Donetz just one of two from the field, so hasn't necessarily taken a lot of shots tonight but able to rack up a couple of free throws on big rebounds. Yeah. 
Iweezy is back in the lineup for UCCS. As Hannes will have one more from the charity stripe. He knocks that one down. Just a reminder, Jesse Iweezy sitting on four fouls here late in this one. Max Stoddard, excuse me, Max Stoddard has played well though, so I don't expect to see Iweezy the entire game. O'Brien off the mark. Washington rips it down. Quickly up to Baca, who is all by himself, finishes and one. Noah Baca. And Noah's a little slow to get up as he took a little bit of contact and then looked like maybe he slipped a little bit as he kind of stretches out his knees. And he gets back up. Mountain Lions up by nine after the fast break bucket for Noah Baca. Nice move there from Rylan O'Brien, making sure that Noah Baca is all right as we'll take another look. So there was a little bit of contact, and yeah, you saw his leg kind of slip out, his right leg slip out from under him. But Noah appears to be okay as he knocks down the free throw, and the Mountain Lions once again have their largest lead of the game at 10. Jeff Culver just going to make sure Noah Bach is all right. Looks like he, as you mentioned, kind of did the splits a little bit. He'll be out for a second here. Just a pretty move down low by Wood as he was able to keep his pivot foot and finish on the other side of the rim. Jesse Iweezy being a little careful there. Make sure he doesn't pick up his fifth. That went through the hands of two mountain lions before Xavier picked it up. Spin move. Got away once. Fade away is going to be way short. Tough shot there. Martinez fading away. Washington was there, but Wood just went over him. Yeah, senior forward out of Anthem, Arizona, has really made a difference tonight. He is not afraid to shoot jumpers, but he's been having a lot of luck in the paint. Washington from the corner, short. And the Mountain Lions are starting to leave a lot of their shots short. You wonder if this short bench is starting to wear on them just a little bit. Wood trying to respond. He's no good with that three. Not the shot, I think that Norm Parrish wanted there. Wood has been great from the field, but that is a quick three to be taken late into this game. UCCS is going to take a 30-second timeout, so we'll stay right here. It actually turns into a full. It'll turn into our media. So 2.41 to go. Mount Lions are clinging to a three-point, or excuse me, six-point lead. One to go. That's all that stands between UCCS and what would be a hard-fought home victory. 
Saar split the defenders, lost the ball, but he's going to be bailed out, and he'll get a couple of free throws as the foul is going to go on O'Brien. And much to the chagrin of the Westminster coaching staff, and I might agree with them as that one looked like it just went off the knee of Hannes Saar. Either way, he'll be back at the free throw line for some more attempts. Hannes' first free throw rolls over the front of the rim. Second one is also good. So Sar money from the free throw line. The lead is back up to eight. That line sticking with man to man here. Wood with some major contact. I Weezy hit the deck and no foul called either direction. So let's such an interesting call seeing how they kind of judge some of those if they call them charges or not. Sar into the lane again around the defender block call. Then Hannes will go back to the free throw line. Foul goes on Kataguchi. That's his fourth personal. Mount Lions with a distinct advantage in the fouls and free throws category tonight as Saar knocks down the seventh free throw of the afternoon. Eight of 10 is Hannes Saar from the free throw line, and he's got 11 points. Hannes has shot more free throws tonight than the visitors, as he has been the benefactor of a lot of calls. O'Brien straight away three, no good. I almost think if he would have taken a step in, would have went right through the net. <laughs> he's been excellent from mid range. Under 90 seconds to go. UCCS just looking to kill a little bit of clock here. Jaden puts up a three. No good. Iweezy, good tip out. I mean, the ball hit the rim. Yeah, good job by the Mountain Lions. They'll have a chance to kill another 20 seconds off the clock. Griffin's happy to oblige here. I'm surprised they're not putting a little bit more pressure, but. Good feed to Iweezy, who can't finish. Washington can't either, but Jaden will have some free throws. Good job on the offensive boards by the Mountain Lions to extend this possession. And Westminster is going to call a timeout as we are under 60 seconds to go. It's a 30 second timeout, so we'll stay right here as the Mountain Lions are holding on to an eight point lead late, Brian. Yeah, Max Stoddard, the story of the night, 18 points for him. Xavier Martinez poured in 15. And Hannes Saar from the free throw line did a fair bit of damage, 8 of 10 from the charity stripe. Mount Lions have just been able to knock down their shots here in the second part of this game. It's Bears good things leading into a big time matchup tomorrow against a ranked opponent. Yeah, they welcome in 10th ranked Colorado Mesa. That'll be a that'll be a good one. Mountain Lions, last time they had a ranked opponent here, was able to knock off Fort Lewis College. And ever since then, the Skyhawks have done nothing but win. They're up to number four in the country right now. So that is a resume building win for sure. If the Mountain Lions could add another one tomorrow, that would be awesome. First, they've got to survive the final 54.8 seconds as Jaden Washington's free throw is off the mark. Both free throws no good. Rebound to the Griffins. Wood, turnaround from the free throw line is good on that one. And 
Westminster will call their final timeout. It's a full timeout as Wood has 22 points. We'll take a break. Mount Lions with possession when we come back. to go. UCCS up by six and with possession. Westminster is out of timeouts. The Mountain Lions have one remaining. Both teams are also in the double bonus. So Westminster is going to go full court pressure. No surprise here as they look to create a turnover. And Hannes will get a couple of free throws. Game has been pretty even when you look at the statistics, the glaring difference being how many free throws the Mountain Lions have had. They've shot 25, about to get up to 27 here. Only seven free throws attempted for the visitors. Mountain Lions playing a very clean game tonight. Mountain Lions have also shot 33 pointers. <laughs> That is a lot of three-pointers for a team that doesn't necessarily shoot the three all that well. And spot on with their average for the season. They're 33% tonight, 33% on the season. Guess it's more of a volume game with them. <laughs> As Saar's second free throw is also good. Han S has been money from the line, 10 of 12 on the game. Most of the Mountain Lion team has shot the free throw well. O'Brien, wow. Fade away, going to his strong hand, hits the three, cut the lead down to five, and Saar will have a couple more free throws. Smart move by Xavier Martinez to get the ball right back to Hannes Saar. I think Norm Parrish is asking for Referees to check if Saar was in bounds. I think that's what they're looking at. I don't think that was close by any means, but I could be mistaken. O'Brien did point towards Saar's foot when he went to go make the move. Say that he stepped out of bounds. So can see the two officials standing there at the monitor getting a look at the replay cam. So they have different angles than we do, but we could see another one potentially from the sideline. Yeah, I thought maybe, I mean, the pass was quick as we'll take another look here. I mean, he wasn't even close to the sideline. I'm not sure what O'Brien was talking about. Because oh, O'Brien pointed at his foot like he had maybe stepped out of bounds. I mean, okay, he came on the inbounds, but he was definitely inbound when he caught that ball. So it'll be close, but I think Saar was in play. Good catch from our camera people to make sure we saw that angle. I think Hannes knew that you know, Xavier wanted to get the ball back to him relatively quickly. As you mentioned, money from the free throw line, 10 of 12 here tonight. So can't imagine that he would have lingered too long on the line. 
Yeah, he was back in. It was quick, but he was back in play, I would say. And they're not even going to have the third official look at it. So a decision has been made, and Saar will indeed have a couple of free throws. good on that a chance here to make it a three possession game as Sar has set career highs in both free throws made and attempted in this game not a surprise since he is 12 of 14 that'll be a career high for just about anybody yeah he has been lights out makes sense that Jeff Culver wanted to get the ball back quickly to him that three is off the mark, rebounds. Who else? Hannes, jump ball, however, will go back to the Griffins. I think Hannes wanted another chance at some more free throws there. As he has made a kill enough that for charity stripe tonight. He's only got two other shots in the entire game, both three pointers. He made one of them as that's off the mark and now Faka with the rebound and so Noah will go to the free throw line. That's pretty selfish of Noah Baca to not get Hannes the ball there. Fourth personal foul there on Clark as well as we're under 15 seconds to go. And now Noah with two free throws. Left it short. Second one is good, and that's seven for the Monument Native, and the Mountain Lions are going to pull it out. That was a three ball from the corner, so 5.7 to go. I hope I didn't speak too early, up by five. Yeah, and the Griffins will back off. So UCCS pulls off a gritty win. It wasn't pretty at the start. They found their shooting touch at the end of the first half, and then were able to hit their free throws down the stretch, Brian, to pull out the win. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was interesting how the Mountain Lions got a spark from a number of different players tonight. Xavier Martinez tying his season high with seven assists. Hannes Saar had 12 of 14 from the free throw line. And we mentioned Big Max Stoddard with a great, great night for number 24 as you take a look at some of the stats here. Yeah, overall shooting numbers, maybe not as great as the Mountain Lions would like to see as they actually shot worse than the Griffins. But man, those free throws, 21 more points from the free throw line did UCCS have than Westminster. As the Mount Lions victory improves them to 11 and 11 on the year. They are seven and nine in our Mac play and get back in the win column as they sweep the season series with the Griffins. And they've got a big matchup tomorrow as they welcome in the 10th ranked team in the country in the Colorado Mesa Mavericks. And Brian, final thoughts on this victory. Yeah, I think the start of the game we thought would be a little bit like the women's game where the Mountain Lions just started a little cold, started a little slow, maybe a little sleepy, and then really, really picked it up later on in the first half and closed out the second half with a great gritty win over a very, very tough Westminster team. So the Mount Lions earn the doubleheader sweep as both the ladies and the men earn victories over the Westminster Griffins. They welcome in the Colorado Mesa Mavericks tomorrow, beginning with the women's game at five o'clock. That is a battle for third place as those two teams go head to head. That's gonna do it for us here. For everyone here at UCCS, for my broadcast partner, Brian Geenan, I'm Jason Carter. Thank you so much for hanging around with us this evening as the Mountain Lions pull off two victories. They'll be back at it tomorrow, beginning at five. We'll see you then.